Welcome to the first video in the Element 14 Get Started with Pi series. I'm Cabe. I'm a blogger here at Element 14, product designer and a W by trade. And I'm Jenny, and I'm actually a really big electronics geek. You didn't think so, right? I've heard a ton about the Raspberry Pi, and I'm interested in having one to see just what the fuss is all about. There are five videos in this series, all short and sweet, designed to get you up and running with your new Raspberry Pi. So in episode one, we'll unbox the Pi, show you everything you need to get it up and running. Episode two, we'll explore using the Pi as a computer. In episode three, we'll get online with the Pi, and in episode four, we'll dive into some basic programming to control an LED. And finally, in episode five, we'll finish by exploring apps, projects, and next steps. So why don't we get started? The Raspberry Pi is a powerful single board computer created by the not-for-profit Raspberry Pi Foundation. It has everything that you need all in one spot. And although the genesis of the $35 Pi is one focused on getting computers into the hands of more kids so they can learn programming, the Pi has actually set off a firestorm of interest. It's definitely got more appeal than just for kids. The Pi is popular. Our community website at Element 14 has hundreds of accessories projects for beginners, intermediate, and expert levels. But before you can actually start a project or attach your first accessory to the Pi, you need to know how it works and just understand more about it. In this video, we'll go over everything you need from taking it out of the box, connecting a keyboard and monitor, and booting it up for the first time. All right, so if you want to follow along as we set up our own Pi, then you should pick up one of our Element 14 Raspberry Pi starter kits. So inside, you'll find a power adapter, an eight gigabyte SD card, a case, and the Raspberry Pi Model B. The Raspberry Pi is a single board computer that has everything you need all in one spot. As you can see, it's a bare circuit board and you're gonna to wanna to protect it. But before we put it in its case, we're gonna take a look at all of its components. At the core of the Raspberry Pi is an ARM processor. It's the same type of processor that's used in a lot of modern devices from tablets to smartphones. So starting on the back, there's actually the slot for the SD card. There's also two USB ports so you can plug in your keyboard and your mouse. There's an Ethernet port for wired connections, the power supply, of course, an HDMI output for connecting to a monitor or a television, an audio jack for earbuds or your headphones, and there's an RCA video output. That's a lot on a little board. Yeah. Let's protect this thing. Let's put it in its case. So I'm just going to stick it in. So you just put it in. It snaps together, right? Yep, snaps together. And uh, that's pretty much it. Nice. There you go. Simple. We should mention again, there are only two USB ports. And if you're like a lot of people, you have a traditional wired mouse and a keyboard, that's gonna take up both USB ports. So if you wanna plug in a thumb drive or speakers, you're kinda out of luck unless you get a wireless combo. That way, you only use up one of the ports. A USB just plugs in simply like this. It's easy. So the Raspberry Pi starter kit comes with a five volt power adapter with a micro USB cable. It actually plugs in like this but we're not gonna plug it in just yet. The Pi will start to boot up immediately. It doesn't have a power switch. And if you're not in the US, don't worry about the North American power cord. We'll ship you one that'll work in your country. So the way you connect your monitor kinda depends on the type of monitor you have. The Pi has an HDMI output, so if you're lucky enough to have an HDMI monitor, you would use that type of cable to connect the Pi and then to the monitor. This is the best type of cable. Not only does it output an HD signal, it also transmits audio. So if your monitor or television has speakers built in, you're also going to get an audio signal. Oh, that's awesome. A DVI monitor has this type of an input on the monitor. So to connect this to the Pi, you'll need an HDMI DVI converter. A DVI monitor will give you a high resolution image, but this type of connection does not carry audio signals. If you have a VGA monitor, you're gonna want the Pi View HDMI to VGA adapter. It simply uh, plugs into your Pi HDMI port and the other end, the VGA cable plugs in. Like a DVI monitor, the VGA cable doesn't carry an audio signal. The RCA connection will give you the lowest quality video output out of all the other options. To use this one, just like DVI, you're gonna need a audio output. So in this, and this cable will go from the stereo port on the Raspberry Pi to the RCA style left and right audio connection. But keep in mind, a lot of new televisions already have HDMI inputs, so for our purposes, that's what we're gonna use. All right, so now we have the monitor, the keyboard, the mouse, and power cord all connected to the Pi. That leaves one part from the starter kit yet to install. That's the SD card. So the SD card contains all the memory that the Pi will have. There's no flash memory or hard disk on board the Pi. The operating system for the Raspberry Pi, the set of basic programs, utilities that make the computer run, resides on the SD card as well. 
Instead of running an operating system that requires a costly licensing fee, the Pi runs an open source Linux operating system. In fact, you probably have some devices at home that run some sort of, some flavor of Linux. Yeah, like a Kindle. Like a Kindle, like, a, like an Android smartphone, uh, even some TVs, you know? Um, yeah, so this operating system is really popular in the programming community, and since the Raspberry Pi was designed to create interest in programming, it totally makes sense to have the Pi run on Linux. And you'll see after we boot up, the user experience in operating a Pi won't feel that foreign at all. This is one of the best parts of the starter kit, the 8 gig SD card. It's formatted for the Pi, and it comes preloaded with, the, with a tool known as Noobs. Which is fun to say. <laughs> yeah, it stands for uh, uh, new out-of-the-box software. Noobs allows you to easily install, remove, and then reinstall various flavors of the Linux operating system via its easy-to-use graphical user interface. Okay, so let's install the SD card and power up. It only really fits in one way, so just make sure the copper tabs are facing the top of the enclosure. You'll be greeted by the Noob's installation utility. The SD card has a few different flavors of the operating system to choose from for more advanced users and for experimenting. The recommended version is Raspbian, so that's what we're going to install. You can install or reinstall the operating system on one SD card over and over, so just don't worry about making mistakes. Of course, if you do have data on the SD card, it will get overwritten. Raspbian is now installing. Don't interrupt the process. Our 8 gig SD card has taken about 10 minutes to install, but your actual mileage may vary. So we're going to skip ahead to it being complete. Look, it's done. <laughs> All I do is click OK. First time you boot up, you'll see the configuration tool menu. Be aware that the mouse is not active and that the up, down, left, and right arrow keys need to be used to navigate the menus. Enter is used to select things. So let's set up some configuration settings for the Pi. First, we'll let it know which language we're using and what country we're in. This helps the keyboard work properly. Select four internationalization options, then select 11 change locales. The format of the locales is a two-letter abbreviation of the language, an underscore, followed by a two-letter abbreviation of the location a dot or a space, and then the type of text encoding. The list is sorted in order by language. So for example, English in the United States would begin EN underscore US, or Spanish in Mexico would begin ES underscore MX. Now, if you're really not sure which to select, the list is detailed in a link that can be found on the webpage where you're viewing this video. The final component of the text string is the type of encoding. If at all possible, select UTF-8. This is very important. Once you find the correct locale, press the space bar and an asterisk will appear between the brackets. Then use your tab key to navigate to OK and press Enter. You'll see the screen that asks again for you to confirm your default location for the system environment with the choices. Select EN underscore US. Then tab to OK and press Return. This took less than a minute with our 8 gig SD card. You may also want to set up your correct time zone. Go back to the internationalization options, then change time zone. Then select your country from the list using the arrow keys on the keyboard, then the appropriate time zone from the list displayed. Press enter, the system will update and return you to the main screen. If you're a beginner, in my opinion, the best config setting is number three, enable boot to desktop. The dialog box says, should we boot straight to desktop? Press enter with yes, highlight. And there you go, the desktop version of Raspbian is displayed. You've successfully set up our Pi, and if you've been following along, you've done it too. Be sure to join us for video two, where we'll actually play with some of the utilities, programs, and games that come with your Pi. We'll see you guys then. There's a link to start a discussion on this page, and every page in the Get Started with Pi section of element14.com. We have over 200,000 members, including lots of Raspberry Pi experts who will be able to help you out.